walk out into the frigid morning air. A blanket of frost covers the dead grass. Very little green is visible from the rising sun. You see people bundled from head to toe with the wind whipping around them. Their breath condenses in the chilly air and leaves white clouds in front of their faces. You hustle along, try to keep out the cold air as best you can, staying hunched over, arms wrapped around you. A light snow begins to fall to the ground as the wind drives it into your unprotected face. You are soon able to escape the bitter chill as you make it into the warp, the protection of your home. This is a scene that many witness over the years that involve a climate that some call unbeatable during the winter months. Living in a climate that is extremely hot during summer and bone chilling in winter can be extremely difficult to adjust for some who are new to the area. Temperatures can drop well below zero, and when you include the wind and snowstorms with that, for some, it can be considered a very difficult place to live. Having to shovel sidewalks and roadways, dealing with blinding road conditions that make travel near impossible, there are many different angles one could take when discussing winter on the prairie. One aspect would be one of a desolate land with little sunlight or vegetation, where blizzards and severe weather can occur at a moment's notice to leave someone stranded and trapped. A very depressing view if you were to only look at it from this perspective. When looking at it this way, one would question the reasons of anyone who were to live here. This is the standard view that most people have, the one that just scratches the surface of what it is like to live here in this region. Even though the land may appear to be dead, it is abundant and teeming with life. Just because the winds are soaring and the temperatures are freezing, the wildlife does not just curl up and sleep all winter. The plains are abuzz with life through these trying months. The white-tailed deer, the Illinois state animal, is extremely common during this time, almost dangerously so. Hunting is one of the most popular sports in the region, and people wake up well before dawn to go participate. Some think it would not be worth it, but tell that to any hunter and they say the thrill is well worth it. Many people might think that being outdoors is the last thing people want to do during this time. This is simply not true. After living here, you begin to get accustomed with the regional temperatures. You look forward to seeing that first snowfall piling up. Even though it may mean extra work for some, it represents recreation for others. Being away from the snow for seven to nine months at a time means some begin to miss its subtle beauty. Children, of course, pray for those heavy snowfalls that mean days off of school, having fun in the winter wonderland. Staring across an open field covered by a fresh, undisturbed blanket of snow is indeed a beautiful sight. This would be the other angle that people could take during this period of blustery, chilly weather. With the proper protection from the elements, this weather could almost be enjoyable to some. With a snowsuit and heavy winter clothes on is usually all it takes to beat the elements during the daylight hours. On those frigid nights, some would pass the time by enjoying the comfort of a warm fire wrapped in a blanket with a cup of hot chocolate. And on those nights, the sky is extremely clear and watching a snowfall can take your breath away. Think about the way the normal winter affects your daily life. Shoveling snow every day from your driveway, walking through the cold to get the mail or from your car, or snowstorms making driving impossible. Winter seems to last forever when it's an inconvenience to our daily lives. Now imagine living through one of Illinois' worst snowstorms in the 1800s with no heat besides the feeble fire you had to build yourself in a log home with no insulation. The cold is only one battle residents of central and southern Illinois had to fight during the winter of 1830 to 1831. It started on December 20th with a cold rain, and by Christmas Eve the sleet and snow had begun. Along with the piling snow, there were maddening winds that made it impossible for a man to walk against for any reasonable amount of time. An early settler by the name of Dr. Julian M. Sturdivant, who was in Jacksonville, Illinois to help start Illinois College, wrote one of the best testimonials to this incredible winter storm. For weeks, certainly for not less than two weeks, the mercury in the thermometer tube was not, on any one morning, higher than 12 degrees below zero. The wind was a steady, fierce gale from the northwest, day and night. The air was filled with flying snow, which blinded the eyes and almost stopped the breath of anyone who attempted to face it. Transportation was at a dead stop during this event. A man and his wife, along with their six children that attempted to make their way through the storm by wagon, were found dead, huddled together next to their wagon that was half covered in snow. And they weren't the only people to not make it. When a person did dare an attempt to venture out into the six-foot snowdrifts and strong northwesterly winds, tracks made by a team and wagon would be covered up before they even turned around to return. But it was absolutely necessary to leave the home in order to get food or fuel. 
Cutting down trees to burn for heat was almost impossible because of the wind and snow, but was made even more difficult because of the frozen moisture in all of the trees. But it had to be done in order to survive. Many people who were just moving into the area from the south had not yet finished building their homes before the winter hit. The cold, snow, and wind caught them by surprise. From one testimony, there were entire villages of 50 living in just two houses that had chimneys and four walls in the entire community. Sometimes a tiny fire was just not enough to keep the citizens of Illinois warm during this event. Clothes had to be piled on along with blankets and as many other layers as possible to survive. Wild animals such as deer, bison, and birds died off in the hundreds due to starvation or being trapped in the cold and killed by other starving predators. John Buckles, who was a resident of central Illinois at the time, said the wild deer became tame with hunger and would even walk up to the door of his cabin to be fed. Hogs, poultry, and other stock also died off in great numbers from the cold and hunger because corn could not be gathered from beneath the piles of snow to feed them. If you ever find yourself angered with the inconveniences of winter again, think back to the snowstorm of 1830 to 1831, a snowstorm that has defined Illinois winters, the winter that proves the full capabilities of Illinois' climate. Food, transportation, fuel, and even the wildlife were affected by this monstrous storm for 80 days. Wind, ice, snow, sleet, and cold ravaged Illinois, warning us that our climate may not be as tame as we think. In the days before computers and a vast amount of weather information at our fingertips, people would find patterns in nature that could forecast the weather for the next day or in the upcoming season. While the woolly worm and colors of the morning sky said something of what we could expect, the persimmon seed is probably the most unique. The forecast for the upcoming winter was obtained when the persimmon was opened up and the seeds investigated. To read the forecast from the persimmon seed, you must slice it open. If the interior portion of the seed had the appearance of a spoon, winter ahead would be a very snowy one. So much snow that you would have to use a shovel all season long. If the shape was like a knife, it would indicate a very cold winter. The old saying, the wind would cut you like a knife, probably came from the persimmon seed forecast. Finally, the mildest forecast for the upcoming winter is when the seed is shaped like a fork. Today, we have many different scientific instruments that observe and record data from various parts of the world. Each of these instruments and data sets can be used to determine the long-term forecast. One of the data variables that climatologists and meteorologists use to determine what our winter will be like is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. This long-term pattern of shifting pressure systems in the equatorial Pacific can give a general idea of what we can expect in the season ahead. It does not use specific numbers or amounts, but tells us if the temperature and precipitation will be above or below normal compared to the long-term climate. The persimmon seed tells us something different. Although the folklore of the persimmon seed is entertaining to see how it will predict the upcoming season, it is not a proven scientific forecast, nor is it accurate. In fact, the persimmon is recording the conditions where it grew up since spring. It is taking into account the location where it grew, the amount of sunlight, precipitation, temperature, and possibly the proximity to humanity. It does not record with the greatest accuracy what we can expect in the months ahead. Whether it be the mighty halo or the mysterious persimmon seed silverware, weather folklore remains a tool used by seasoned farmers and hopeful hearts all over the countryside. The woolly worm, aka the woolly bear, is actually the Isabella tiger moth in its larval stage and remains to this day part of the folklore prediction process. The woolly bear is a piney caterpillar in the shade of dark brown to black at both ends with a reddish orange band in the middle of its body. The orange band can either be very narrow or very wide and is the key to the entire predicting process. Some towns hold annual woolly worm festivals in the fall, complete with caterpillar races and an official declaration of the woolly worm's prediction for that winter. Where the story began is unsure to this day, be it from Indian lore or simply a wives' tale, or even to many more a scientific certainty, 
The overall belief is that the wider the orange band, the milder the winter will be, and the narrower it is, the colder and harsher winter will be. The question is, do the predictions hold water? Dr. C.H. Curran, former curator of insects at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, tested the woolly worm's accuracy in the 1950s. His surveys found an 80% accuracy rate for the woolly worm's weather predictions. However, many remain skeptical of the various myths and legends, including the woolly worm and its place in modern-day weather predicting. During the winter months in Illinois, we're affected by many different winter storms. These winter storms do tend to stick to three basic tracks. The first track, developing in Alberta, Canada, known as the Alberta Clipper System, starts to make its way through the Great Lakes and moves very quickly, in fact, but it has very low moisture content associated with it, moving through the Great Plains and then off towards the northeast through the Great Lakes, not picking up a whole lot of water content with it. The next storm track we will be talking about is the Colorado Low Pressure. Now this does develop around the Colorado and Four Corners region, making its way through the southern plains. Not a whole lot of bodies of water for this to feed off moisture, so it does have a moderate amount of moisture and it moves at a moderate speed. Finally, the last storm track that we are influenced by is the Inside Leader System. Now this one also develops around the Four Corners and New Mexico region, making its way very slowly, but you can see it does move through the Gulf of Mexico picking up quite a bit of moisture content as it travels off towards the northeast. So these storm tracks over the winter months can bring us varying amounts of precipitation, but we can also see many different kinds of precipitation also. Winter can be a peaceful time with periodic gentle snowfalls and an occasional glistening of ice crystals floating across the landscape. But sometimes the most harshest conditions prevail when gusty winds blow snow from one part of the state to another. Blizzards and ice storms are less enjoyable winter experiences, except for children wanting an official snow day from school. Blizzards are the combination of cold temperatures and strong winds that blow across the landscape, reducing visibilities. The National Weather Service defines a blizzard as a storm which contains large amounts of snow or blowing snow with winds greater than 35 miles per hour for more than three hours. Driving in such conditions would be unbearable and extremely dangerous. Not only would driving in a blizzard be difficult, but snow drifts make getting out of the house or down a street extremely difficult. Some people think that a blizzard must have snowfall. All that is really necessary is a previous snowfall on the ground. It is the strong winds that pick up the snow and blow it all around. Whiteout conditions are more likely to occur if extremely cold temperatures are in place, causing the snow to be light and powdery. The lighter the snow, the better chance it has to be picked up by the wind and blown around reducing visibility to only a few feet. Blizzards develop in the northern portion of the United States between the Great Plains and the Atlantic coast. A key signature of a blizzard is the storm system. If the storm system deepens in pressure, the winds intensify with the deepening. Sometimes these storms with a large drop in pressure are referred to as white hurricanes due to their central pressures being similar to a hurricane's pressure. Blowing snow is a bit easier to deal with than an accumulation of heavy ice on trees and power lines that can damage cars and homes or make travel extremely dangerous. The National Weather Service defines an ice storm as a storm that produces a significant accumulation of ice during freezing rain. When freezing rain develops and falls on already cold surfaces, it coats any object it hits. Over several hours of freezing rain, objects can be completely encased by ice nearly half to two inches thick. The main culprit of ice storms is slow-moving warm air masses from the south that migrate over extremely cold air at the surface. If precipitation falls through the warm air mass, it is similar to rain. However, if it falls through bitterly cold air, it becomes super cold. If super cold rain hits a cold object, it instantly freezes. If the column of cold air is much thicker, then the super cold rain becomes an ice crystal, reducing the harmful influence on objects. When an ice storm or blizzard approaches, it is best to stay home and ride the storm out. Traveling increases risk of accidents and unnecessary injuries. It is likely that with these storms, electricity will go out. So develop a plan of action that includes what supplies you will need to keep your family warm and food available for a few hours or even a few days. These storms are known to thrust the most modern families back into days when stories and diaries were the forms of entertainment. So have your favorite book or board game handy to rejuvenate that much needed family time. 
On the morning of January 6, 2010, we had a low pressure system that was building over the Texas Panhandle and Oklahoma Panhandle regions, which was being fed by strong warm winds out of the southeast off the Gulf of Mexico, which were being driven by this high pressure system that was sitting over the Mississippi and Alabama areas. During the January 6th afternoon and into the evening, the slow pressure system moved to the northeast, bringing with it those warm, moist winds off the Gulf of Mexico. And as the slow pressure strengthened, it also brought in strong, cold winds off the Great Plains and into the Midwest, which as these cold temperatures intersected the warm, moist air coming off the Gulf of Mexico, produced ample amounts of snowfall across the state, especially in the central and southern ports of the area. Over the course of January 7th and into the 8th, this low pressure system moved further to the northeast, still bringing plenty of snowfall across the area, especially in the eastern parts of Illinois. It also brought strong northeast winds on its backside, which as they crossed the Great Lakes, produced lake effect snow in the Chicago area, bringing an additional 6 to 7 inches of snow to the area and forcing the closure of more highways and interstates over the course of January 8th. Crossing the state, the heart of the low pressure system passed directly over central Illinois in the early morning hours of the 7th, dumping a hefty amount of snow across the state, especially in the west central region. The heaviest amount totaled 8.2 inches and was recorded in Galesburg around 7 a.m. on the morning of the 7th of January. In addition to these snow totals, winds were recorded from all points on the compass in Illinois due to the center of low pressure being over the state with wind speeds in excess of 20 miles per hour. These winds helped to create low visibility conditions, especially in the central and northern parts of the state, where the snow was much drier and thus more easily blown about. This blowing snow prompted dangerous driving conditions and the advisories and closings of most interstates and highways across central and northern Illinois. By the afternoon of January 7th, the system was moving eastward over Indiana and Ohio, bringing behind it sharply colder temperatures moving into the region with lows in the single digits across central Illinois on the night of January 7th into the 8th. Thankfully, though, by the morning of January 9th, strong high pressure had finally moved into the region, helping to stabilize weather conditions and bring a definite end to the snowstorm in Illinois. Heavy, white, glistening snowfall. To some, it's a chance to get out and have snowball fights with friends and build memories by building snowmen with family. But for others, it's a time to work and keep people safe on the roadways. Driving during winter can be treacherous because you never know what to expect on the roadways, especially when it comes to ice. But Charleston Street Superintendent Quincy Combs says there's a mixture behind how they can fix these problems to make it easier on drivers when they're hitting the streets. You need to be aware that bridges freeze before the streets do um, because of the cold air passing under the bridge. That pavement becomes colder quicker, so obviously you can frost uh, gathers on that bridge, so bridges become slick really a lot faster than the streets do. And uh, <clears throat> so we try to treat the streets, uh, the bridges early uh, with a salt brine compound. It's a salt water that we spray on there that will dry on there and, and, and leave a salt film to prevent that from that frost from happening. Though road crews are working day and night to keep the streets safe, there are still unknown conditions that has caused some drivers to experience how winter weather can take a toll on not only your driving, but as well as your car. Be aware of the snow plows moving around, you know, if they can't see you in their, in, in their mirrors, then obviously they can't see, you know, if you basically, if you can't see them, they can't see you. So stay back away from the snow plows, you know, give them plenty of room to work. Um, biggest thing is, you know, be prepared early. So whether you're heading to work, school, or anywhere in the snow, there are just a few tips you can take from some drivers who've been in the same circumstances when it comes to driving on wintry roads. One time I, my brakes uh, actually froze when I got in the car, and so they didn't actually work. So there's a really weird uh, spinning on the road. So I've had some bad experience with uh, ice on the road. And road officials also want you to be safe so you can have safe travels to your destination. When the weather gets cold in Illinois, we not only see the climax of a thrilling football season, but we see the beginning of an exciting indoor sports season as well. The major winter sports played and viewed in Illinois consists of activities such as hockey, badminton, wrestling, and basketball. While hockey is gaining popularity, basketball is still more popular with Illinoisans. With high school basketball giving almost all towns something to come together and cheer about, it will remain number one in the hearts of Illinoisans for years to come. 
uh, basketball in Illinois, especially when you get to March Madness, it does have a special appeal to everyone in the state because it is really uh, the oldest of the state tournaments in a lot of ways. And so I think that has a lot of attachment to, to people. And uh, I think with the new four-class system, that's kind of taken away from that a bit. But I think it's still a very, very popular sport and will continue to be a popular sport. While basketball may be Illinois' first winter love, other sports are available to give individuals opportunities that otherwise they may not have during the winter season. The sport of wrestling is a perfect example of this. It is a winter sport that isn't always that well known or supported, but gives athletes a reason to stay in shape and be part of a team. When otherwise there would be nothing to do in the cold weather, wrestling is also something that can help keep our youth out of trouble. Um, I, I don't know if it brings more excitement. I think it just brings more people indoors to watch it, whereas uh, if the climate was a little better, um, they might be doing outdoor activities and so forth. But uh, it's on, and, and people focus on it. And, and, uh, and again, I, I think it's a, it's a bit of a highlight to look forward to when, when there's not a whole lot you can do in terms of uh, leisure activity uh, with, uh, with the weather uh, and restrictions. You've got a lot of people that, that obviously wrestling – uh, which is my sport, um, they've had just such a passion for it that they tend to bring their kids along. I also think having a good kids club program to get youth involved is important as well. And I know for me, uh, as a coach here at the high school, it's important for me to try and walk the hallways and get freshmen and sophomores and the younger kids just to come out and, and see that wrestling is an enjoyable sport, that it's fun, and that you know it can really keep you in shape and really get you in better shape for the next sport in the spring. While sports such as basketball and wrestling are just starting up, the thrilling football season is coming to an end. Many would argue that winter is the best season for football and the most exciting time to watch a game. During the cold winter season, many gather around their televisions in hopes that their team can win the big game. Only the winter season is able to bring many the dreams of a championship for their team. I, I think most people associate uh, the fall climate with football and uh, football with the fall climate. So uh, when uh, that crisp, cool air begins to blow, uh, uh, I, I, without question, you think of the marching bands and the tailgating and, and associate the two together. I think it's a good thing for the state. I think it's a good thing for, for the fans, but and more importantly for the players, because there is a, if you, if you wouldn't have holiday tournaments over Christmas uh, break for the schools, I think it'd be very difficult to keep teams as sharp, and I think it keeps the season going because basketball is really the longest season, and, and that's one thing I think it's a, it's hard sometimes for families for that. But uh, you know, for, for players like that, it's going to be two or three years. That's going to be part of your life, and I think it builds memories for for a long, long time. I, I think it's nice. Families don't oftentimes get to spend a lot of time together, and if they can get together, uh, whether it be around the dinner table, or around the TV to watch a ball game, that's great. Um, the winter months, uh, there, there's really not a whole lot to do, and if you can get uh, uh, excitement and some sort of build up, uh, you know, at home to get you through the, the dreary days, uh, so be it. Let it be around football. For for me, uh, as far as a coach, you know, I, I've always said I'll coach the same way whether the gym's full or empty. But there there is that I don't know when you think back the sentimental factor that you have a gym and it's full and it's cold when you go in and do that and you smell the popcorn in the air and. And everything it does. Uh, as I get older, especially, it means more and more to me to be able to coach in, in that type of atmosphere and that sort of sort of game. And uh, for the kids, I don't think they realize it. Uh, I think they will, you know, 20, 30 years down the road. And that's you know the way I was where I was playing because you're always saying you're going to play the next game. So, uh, you know, the, the the gym and that is just very symbolic of Illinois basketball. Winter sports in Illinois give fans and athletes excitement when they can't be outside doing other things. When the temperatures are in the teens and the snow is falling, sports will always give Illinoisans something to turn to in the dreary season. Many people have different opinions on winter. For some, it is a time of family get-togethers and fun in the snow. But for others, it is about cold, sicknesses, and possible accidents. These are some EU students' opinions on winter. What I like about winter is the joyous spirit during the holidays and, of course, the holidays. And another thing I love about winter is the majority of my family is birthdays. Well, I love winter for multiple reasons. One, because winter is like the cleanest season out of the year. Like summertime, all the germs could just live in the air because it's warm outside and winter is very clear and it's crisp. I like winter because of like hanging out with friends, having snowball fights, going out in the field with my dog, running around with him, and just overall snow. What I like about winter is the Christmas 
uh, feeling about it and the snow. It just kind of just makes that season much brighter. I really like having like the ability to go out and have snowball fights and run around outside with my dog, and then uh, being able to like cuddle up next to a fire and like watch a movie and have some hot cocoa. I would say I have to like winter because it's not summer. In the cold, you can always bundle up and be comfortable, but in the summertime, you can only take off so many clothes and you're still miserable. When thinking about an Illinois winter, you may think of a new beginning or a time when the frigid cold air is nothing but crisp and still. You may think that winter is more quiet as cars are not making as much noise on the roads and animals are all sleeping. But whatever comes to mind when thinking about winter, it's certain. This land of Lincoln is also a state of snow. And for about four months, everything is cold and icy, white and serene. As the sun gradually lowers in the sky in the northern hemisphere during the fall season, cold arctic and polar air masses begin to intrude farther and farther south into the United States. When these frigid polar air masses make their way farther south, a disturbance forms along the boundary between the cold polar air and the relatively warm tropical air, causing winter storms. When these types of systems move through the area, they're usually in tent systems that cover tens of thousands of miles. Illinois' location in the Midwest and its great north to south extent place it in the path of many of these storms. When conditions are right, these blizzards can strike Illinois hard, leaving snow and ice all over parts of the state. During an Illinois winter, we wake to snow crystals sparkling in the sunlight. We wake to evergreen branches bowing under the weight of the heavy flakes that have fallen overnight, sometimes much to our surprise. Snow covers the ground, hardening it, while it rests from growing over the spring and summer. But just as quick as an Illinois winter begins, cuddling by the fire comes to an end. Earmuffs and scarves are packed away for the next year. Blue jays fly free again against the bright blue skies. All the snow begins to melt. There's a new life again. It's all about wiping the slate clean and preparing for a new beginning in the spring.